Well, 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 folks, what a time to be alive. <laughs> I will tune, I'll wait for you guys to tune in and, uh, and check into the video and let's get started with this week's live. We've got lots of uh, cool things to talk about today. Um, just trying something a little bit different by being on the phone. Uh, the computer was playing up for quite a while there and uh, everyone said that they liked the phone quality better than what the, uh, the laptop did. So um, here we are with this week's Facebook Live. So um, we had our first month in a year almost of no interest rate increases. Surprise, surprise, right? Everyone's like, they're going all the way up. They're going up to 10%. They're going up to 20%. Um, and now we've yeah, we're seeing uh, that, they're, that they're not going up. So um, let's get straight into it. I've got some, uh, some news articles here and uh, we'll start with entertaining everybody by reading um, the, uh, the statement from the RBA. So this is straight from their mouth. So uh, at its meeting today, the board decided to leave the cash rate target unchanged at 3.6% and the interest rate on exchange settlement balance unchanged at 3.5%. This decision follows a cumulative increase in interest rates of three and a half percentage points since last May last year. The board recognises that monetary policy operates with a lag and that the full effect of this substantial increase of interest rates is yet to be felt. That's a very different tune that they are saying, right? That's a very different tune. The board um, recognises that monetary policy operates with a lag and the full effects of substantial increase, so they're admitting that they know it's substantial increase, is yet to be felt, right? <laughs> Ooh, this is the fun part, right? The board took the decision to hold the interest rate steady this month to prove to provide additional time to assess the impact of the increase in interest rates to date and the economic outlook. Um, we'll go through it and let's see if it has the real kicker in here, right? I haven't read this. Uh, global inflation remains very high. In the headline terms, it's moderating. Although services price inflation remains high in many econo economies, the outlook for global economy remains subdued with the below average uh, growth expected this year and next. Uh, recent banking system problems in the United States and Switzerland have resulted in the volatility in financial markets and the reassessment of the outlook for global interest rates. These problems are also expected to lead to tighter financial conditions, which would be an additional headwind for the global economy. At least they're not lying that they've fucked the whole market completely. Um, they're, they're putting it in their um, statements now, which is pretty fun. But I go out and look at a few different things, right? So yesterday, um, for those of you that don't know, the Be Invested head office is located in uh, Norwest Business Park, which is in uh, Norwest, Bella Vista, Borkham Hills, uh, Northwestern Sydney area. And um, uh, probably a half a K down the street, um, there's a Woolworths building and it's the Woolworths head office. And um, I just found it interesting that um, I'm trying to find more office space, right? Our team is continuously growing. We've got, I had someone come in today and they're like, wow, you've got so many staff here. We're like, yeah, we've got them upstairs and we've run out of space there as well. Um, and I'm trying to buy like a big, substantial, um, uh, big, substantial um, sort of office space. And one of my mates sent me last night this office space that's for lease and said, here you go, here's like 2,000 square meters of, of space. And I was like, that's pretty cool. But I can't buy it, right? I want to buy uh, our offices that we own. And um, I looked at it and I was like, hang on a second, this is a Woolworths head office. Woolworths head office, I posted it in Birchfeed. So if you guys are in Birchfeed, you would have seen me post a link. I put a little laughy, smiley face at it. I just find it interesting that Woolworths is um, creating space there and now they're renting it, right? Isn't Woolworths one of the largest companies in the country um, that you know is, shouldn't be needing to rent out their spare bedroom, right? Why is Woolworths renting out their spare bedroom, i.e. some office space in their head, corporate head office? I just found it very strange, right? Equally, I found it very strange that I posted another article yesterday in the Birch feed where I was talking, about, where they talking about McDonald's is doing cutbacks, right? We've got Maccas. Maccas doing cutbacks in their head office, right? Why is Maccas cutting their staff, right? It's just these economic challenges that are out there. And surprise, surprise, they destroyed the economy. They made this fake economy uh, by printing all this cheap, easy, readable credit, credit up. And uh, they're crashing it because they're trying to take control of it. 
And um, I said it a year ago, I say it now, I said it in January this year, I said, I don't care where interest rates go this year. We will not see interest rates where they started off this year. They pushed rates up once, wow, they got one out. Um, however, by the end of this year, you know, we're gonna see a, tide, a change in tide. And um, if you think about a tsunami, right? A lot of people, what happens when a tsunami happens, right? You have an earthquake, whatever, some plates move, whatever they say happens. Does the water just go bang and smash up to the ocean, uh, to the to the land, or do people go, "Wow, look at that!" and the water gets sucked out to shore, right? And in a tsunami situation, I've never been in one, touch wood, but um, from my understanding and doing my research, is that the ocean gets sucked out from the land. So you just people sitting there go, "Wow, where did the ocean go?" Right? If you're ever sitting at the beach and you're saying, "Wow, what happened to the ocean?" Get the fuck out of there, right? Run, right? <laughs> because a tsunami sucks all the water out and then smashes it back on the shore. And we're in a market now where they're trying to suck the liquidity out, right? And everyone's like, where did all the liquidity go, right? But it's when that liquidity comes back in, which is gonna cause the next chapter. And we are about to go into that. Uh, we have started that, uh, not that anyone has realized. We're just looking now at it all getting sucked out, right? And we're starting to see the ramifications of this liquidity in the fraudulent financial markets that we're, um, uh, <laughs> that, that we're in. So let's look at it here. It goes on to say the Australian banking system is strong, well capitalized and highly liquid. It is well placed to provide the credit that the economy needs. Well, of course it is. They can just keep pushing digits and pushing buttons in their big computer, right? Um, I do, some people ask me, Nathan, what do I think about the economy, do I think that Australia is going to have, um, you know, a banks go bankrupt here? I'm not, personally, I'm not too concerned. Uh, I'm seeing a fair few things and I'll go into that in a moment. I'm not concerned about the Australian banks, um, but the US banks, very important because how our currency works, I'm gonna talk about our currency a lot today, right? Um, the, the currency that we've got being Aussie dollar and the currency that's used around the world is based off the US dollar. So if the US dollar puts up their interest rates by a half a percent, right? Australia doesn't put its interest rate up by a half a percent. What happens is that the cost of the Aussie dollar drops. And then when the cost of the Aussie dollar drops, that means that all our imports become more expensive and because we're constantly importing things. It means that everything that we'll import would go up in value. So we have to follow the US dollar because we're hooked at the hips with it. So as US has been pushing their rates up, Aussies have to push up their rates as well. Um, but if the US was forced to drop their interest rates, what would occur at that point is that all the other countries that are based in the US dollar um, would need to drop their rates as well. Otherwise they would be too strong and it would be the reverse effect. So, and no one would visit us for tourism and there'd be a whole lot of other issues there. Um, but I'm gonna get on the cash shortly. A range of information including the monthly CPI indicator suggests that inflation has peaked in Australia. Goods price inflation is expected to moderate over months ahead due to global developments and a softer demand in Australia. Meanwhile, rents are increasing at the fastest rate in some years with vacancy rates in many parts of the country. Woo to all the investors, right? Because inflation does not uh, discriminate. Inflation does not discriminate. Doesn't matter if you are what country we're from. Doesn't matter what your um, what your cash position is. Doesn't matter on many different things, right? Um, uh, inflation is hitting everything. So it says here. I find it interesting. It says the goods price and inflation is expected to moderate over the following months due to global developments and softer demand. Right? Go to the shops and tell me what is cheaper at your grocery bill. Right? Tell me what you have found which has come down. Nothing has come down. Nothing. Um, has come down in value, nothing at all. So, um, exciting, exciting times. They cannot control it. They have admitted that they cannot control inflation. That's where we're at at the moment. Growth in the Australian economy has slowed with the growth over the next couple of years expected to be below trend. So we're heading into an economic deflationary cycle. Deflation will re lead into recession, which we're already in a recession. 
and we're just going to see the wheels fall off the cart. doesn't matter if you're, I saw there was an article from Culture Kings, their stock price tank, there was some online retailer yesterday, Price uh, the thing went into administration. Um, everybody is going into, um, you know, businesses out there are in a lot of pain, right? So if the businesses are in a lot of pain, then a lot of people don't have income, they don't have jobs, there's not as many jobs out there, there's not as much liquid cash floating around, things getting tighter, it's a big recipe for disaster. It's bigger and worse than inflation, and it's which way do you want to die? Do you want to die via a, uh, a gun to the head or a knife in the back? That's the choice that the RBA uh, has. Do we kill the currency and kill the economy via a hyperinflation, or do we kill it with deflation? And there's only one way that they're going to go, and that's with inflation. It's what they've done time and time again, and it's the only way for us to get forgiveness for all the debt that's been created. And if you are fortunate enough to be holding some little pennies of, of debt, well, then that debt will be wiped away in the big mix of things. So, um, yeah, exciting uh, statements here. Um, but it sounds very different. Like, why didn't they talk about these things going back three months ago? Why weren't these things even talked about as a potential risk? Because we never saw, I don't recall ever seeing any of these articles come out from the governor um, of Philip Lowe, whatever you call him, so the RBA, he never said, hey, we've got a risk that the banks will implode. We've never seen that they said that US was going to be an issue until the banks went bankrupt, right? That is amazing, right? It's massive. It's massive. But anyway, um, it's all these news articles out here. Here's the first one here. Uh, new retail data expected to weigh in on rates decision, the latest round of retail spending figures. Um, Retail trade was flat in February, raising rising just 0.2% according to the latest figures from the Australian Bureau of Statistics off the back of 1.8% in January. Um, yeah, retail screwed, so yep. Yeah. Um, here's the uh, funny uh, article here, which is the smaller banks, right? We're in a country now where everybody um, is concerned about their money in the bank. Um, and I'm just going to, I don't even know if I've got articles about this. I don't have the articles here. And I don't, I, I'm recording this from my phone, so I can't pull it out. But um, I saw someone on Facebook yesterday said that the bank, I think it was from Queensland, it was one of my ex-staff, had posted something on their Facebook that, um, that as of uh, immediately, that the bank, it's a big four bank, it was Combank, I think it was, um, would not be doing more than $50 worth of change, right? 50 bucks worth of change. I tried something the other week and I went to the bank and I've got a little game in my head, right? And if anyone can pick the game that I'm playing, it'll be funny, right? But I'm not gonna share it with you guys because I think it would absolutely crush the banks, right? Um, but it's to do with getting access to some cash, right? And I went into a bank and I asked for a thousand dollars of five cent pieces, a thousand dollars of ten cent pieces, a thousand dollars of twenty cent pieces. The guy's jaw dropped. And he goes, Why do you need it for? I'm like, Well, firstly, I just want to get some change, right? What can I get? And um, he goes, Look, we wouldn't even have three hundred dollars in our safe. <laughs> I was like, What the fuck, right? And uh, he went out the back and he came out and they gave me a hundred dollars worth of five cent pieces, a hundred dollars worth of ten, and a hundred dollars worth of twenty cent pieces. And I was like, I was just thinking to myself, you don't have 300 bucks in the bank, right? And then um, went to another bank and they could only give me the same thing, right? So it was really funny to see what amount of money that these banks hold that actually don't have any cash. And um, I've been watching some videos out there just from around the world. Uh, in the UK, this guy went to get some silver, uh, I believe it was, and he went to the bank and wanted to get his cash out. And uh, he uh, couldn't get $5,000 out of his bank and they told him that they don't hold $5,000 there. So even if you, um, you, you have to call up and ask like three days in advance, they've got to put it in the vault out of the back. That's why the banks don't have those screens up anymore because they just do not have the cash. Um, there's a guy in America, um, which I shared some of the videos in the Birch feed as well, um, where he said the same sort of thing occurred. They just don't have money, right? Doesn't matter if you're trying to get a five cent piece, doesn't matter if you're trying to get a, um, you know, a hundred dollar note, doesn't matter what it is. Go to the bank and just ask them, just say for the fun of it, like, hey, I want to get 10 grand out. What can I do? Can I get it out? They won't give it to you. Right? They just do not have it. So people are asking me, I'm thinking like, are their loans safe and all that? Personally, um, 
Personally, I think that our loans are perfectly safe. Um, the loan that you have, if you have a mortgage with the bank, that is the only asset that the bank has. The only asset that they have is that they, they have you on the hook for 30 years to pay your mortgage off at 5% per interest per year. That is the only asset of the bank. So if the bank was to go bust, well then those assets is what would be bought up by another bank and you know that's, that's the bond uh, market that they're, that they're trading in. So um, this article here says, um, uh, at 240 it was put out, it says the smaller banks almost certainly passing on the full rate rise for customers. Um, which is pretty funny, um, which is, you know, the cost of funding. Um, it's just exciting, it's just exciting. Right? Um, what else are we gonna say? Um, so interest rates, right? Where will they go to from now? What is Birchie's prediction? Um, I've been wrong a fair bit. Um, not specifically wrong, uh, but just, you know, they've pushed it a bit further than what anyone thought it would be. So I used, if you go back to my old videos, people said, Birch, you were wrong. You said that they will not put interest rates up. I never said that they wouldn't. I said that they couldn't, right? And if they did, it would blow the system up, which they did, and the system is blowing up. So I was right. Um, but if you would ask me my timing and my thought, of it, um, I said last year, by the end of financial year, it would happen, uh, not before and not after, around the financial year. I believe that we'll probably see our first rate cut over the next three months, uh, probably as early as July, as late as October, but I think probably July, we'll see our first rate cut and don't make financial decisions based on what Birchie has to say. I'm just a dickhead on the internet with a haircut that looks like the Lego man, as some people tell me, but, um, you know, it's uh, exciting times, exciting times because they're right on track. But one thing you can be sure of is that they will not just cause a little mess, right? With what they've done uh, is now irreparable, irreparable. Um, they're going to have to print so much more uh, liquidity into the system than what they ever took out. So, uh, yeah, just be excited by that. Now, these articles... These are just some fun articles, some headlines that are coming out, um, which will be cool to read. Um, just go on to talk about something that we touched on a while ago. Um, for us to pay, for us to pay our debt off or to service our debt as a nation, um, we need to get more tax revenue in. So we've got, as a country, let's pretend we're a business and we've got lots of debt. The country's taken on debt to keep itself alive. Right? So the country, being a company has gone and set up a business, uh, they've taken on debt, and now they're in a position where they can't roll their debt over, and they don't have enough cash flow to pay for the debt. So what do they do with their debt? They turn around, and they, um, they have to create more income. How do you create more income? You have to create more taxes. So do we raise taxes with the people that we have in our pool? No. We need to get more tax slaves and put them in the system and get them to work hard and pay their money. And uh, you know that's how we try and service our debt. So the problem that we have is that we can't breed quick enough to get our tax slaves you know, internally. So we have to go externally and migrate more tax slaves. And uh, I mean that in a nice way. We're all tax slaves before anyone that's got uh, five pronouns after their name wants to come and tell me about I'm being mean, um, we're all tax slaves and we need to get more slaves quicker. So what we have to do is bring people in and then that's gonna cause another issue here, which is what we're, we're seeing here. So um, Nate here just said 600,000 new tax slaves incoming, exactly. So this here says, we cannot keep up. West Sydney Mayor, Mayor, Mayor what do we call him? Um, fears for state's future amid population boom. Australia's population is set to surge in the coming years, but it's left one Sydney mayor uh, fearing the city's future. Here is what it could mean for you. So just think about it, right? Where's the opportunities now? The last few years has been there's been low migration. There's some areas in Sydney where I've been talking about 200 grand properties, 300 grand properties, 350k properties. These properties are cheaper than what they were 10 years ago, 15 years ago. In Sydney, right? I bought one today um, uh, for 
360,000. It's 10 years old. It sold for 300, it's 12 years old. It sold for 340,000 uh, 12 years ago. And I'm picking up for 360,000 today. So we've had two property booms and I'm picking up a property that's 12 years old, rents for like 450 bucks a week, I'm picking up for 360K. Imagine when they start filling these areas up and these things are in high demand, the rents go up to 700 bucks a week, throw a little bit of inflation in there. And, um, and then we need to um, look at what these things would be selling for then. That's where the opportunity is uh, today. But anyway, this Western Sydney mayor um, has delivered a dire warning to all levels of government about the state's future as Australia braces to welcome 650 migrants over the next two years. 650. Uh, migrants in the next two years. Um, that, what's the country at now, like 25 million people? That's increasing like 5%, 4% of our uh, national population in a period of um, two years. <laughs> um, so if we look at it, where do migrants come to? Do they come to, um, I don't know, Toowoomba? I'm saying Toowoomba because I settled in a motel at Toowoomba, right? Do I do? Do they immigrate to Toowoomba? No, they don't. Right? Some do. Right? But they would come to places like Sydney, like Melbourne. Right? Um, so what is going to happen as we try and get ourselves out of our nation debt problem, and we have to try and service this debt that the country has? Uh, how people? How, where are these people going to land to? So just think about this, right? Um, the government figures predict that the country is set to have its biggest population boom over the next 24 months, with figures to surpass the 2008 Big Australia era. An extra 456,000 called Australia home between June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009, with a growth rate of 2.1% higher than the average annual rate. So just think about that, right? We're getting 30% higher amount of population occurring than what we did in 2008, right? What happened in 2008? They dropped interest rates. Um, they migrated so many more migrants in the country to try and pay off the mess of the GFC. And that's how we didn't get into, you know, a bigger mess like what we had uh, in the US and whatnot. And now we've got a larger amount again. What happened off the back of that? We saw the largest boom ever. Now Treasury officials adjusting economic forecasts ahead of the federal budget to anticipate Australia's population growth to double that figure into the lead up to 2025, with 900,000 extra residents expected to move in across the country, according to the Daily Telegraph. So it's 2023, 2024, one year, 2025, two year is a potential of 900,000 extra migrants coming to this country. <laughs> it's just amazing. It's understood that the return of international students post... <laughs> it's a fucking joke the last few years anyway. I'm not even saying the word. Still never said it. Never once have you heard me say the word. Um, I'm never going to say it. Uh, post that thing that happened. An influx of foreign workers and tourists will be contributing factors to the nation's population growth. Uh, we can't have 900,000 people coming in over two years when we can't even build enough housing to accommodate that many people. We're never going to be able to build the housing for that people because every week there's a new builder going broke or pile of builders going broke. Last week, there was a builder in Melbourne. I don't know the builder, right? Um, they had 1,700 homes being built and they went bust last week, right? So who's going to build these properties? <laughs> and then they'll say it's a chip shortage or they'll say it's, uh, it's China or Ukraine or Russia. Right? Well, they'll make up something to blame it on. Of that number of 900,000 people, it's expected that 50,000 people will hunker down in Sydney each year, adding its cities in a south population of 331,000 people. However, the city's residential vacancy rates sit at 1.3% and rental vacancy rates at 1.7%. Mr Carbone holds concerns about new migrants taking away the housing opportunities that for those already struggling in the market. We're happy for migration. We're always taking migration. And people need to understand that before that time in 2020, 
There were 150,000 people coming in every year to this country and many of them into Western Sydney and we were very happy to accommodate them. The fact is we don't want to see and what we have seen over the past is granny flats popping up everywhere. Do you know how much it costs to build a granny flat now? I've had people tell me a granny flat costs $200,000. <laughs> Who in the world would spend 200 grand on a granny flat anyway? So, you want to know my view on where there could be property booms? That's how we help people, right? That's my IP, come and chat to us. What do you suggest we do with the population boom in Sydney? Where do you suggest they live? One worried Australian tweeted. Another resident question, can someone tell me how a population boom will help Australia's massive housing crisis? It was 24 million people here in Australia in 2017 who have had a population boom since then. We're on track to hit 50 million people by 2050, a third added. Melbourne and Sydney will be unbearable by then. Australia's population currently sits at 26,407,138 people, with an overall population increase of one person every 55 seconds. I reckon there might be a couple of people that won't be on that list, but anyway, we'll leave that to the side. Um, there's probably a lot more people that we realise. Um, here's the, uh, the next article off the back of that. Housing crisis. Australia faces 106,000 home shortage by 2027. Well, we're already sitting at, um, uh, so let's just read this. Australia faces 106,000 home shortage by 2027. The extreme pain being felt in the housing market is set to continue with a whopping 331,000 household already in rental stress. There's already a shortage of another 300,000 Dwelling, so add another hundred on top. That's not, that's just saying they're in mortgage stress, right? But there's still shortage of 350,000 thereabouts. So I don't know if it's in this article, but anyway. Um, Australia's horrid housing market is set to continue with extreme pain hitting renters and a shortage of home supplies uh, set to drag out for years. An alarming new report has revealed it has shown that there will be a shortage of 166 homes. Um, Australia resulted in skyrocketing interest rates, soaring immigration, a lack of building and community opposition to development, according to the National Housing Finance and Investment Corporation. It forecasts that Brisbane alone, which is gearing up to host the Olympics in 2032, will, there will be a shortfall of 12,000 homes within five years, while Sydney will be lacking more than 10,000 homes. Perth is predicted to record the biggest shortfall of 25,000 dwellings, right? That's a very important thing, right? These areas, areas that have been common in discussion and common in purchasing in our visions five years ago, three years ago, before these things occurred. Um, uh, it's expected that 148,000 new dwellings are expected to come on the market in 2023 financial year. This will drop to 127,000 in new construction 24-25. Over the three years to 24-25, it expects that 138 thousand net new additions to be added to Australia's stock. This was well below the 180 average each year forecast in last year's report for the same period. It expects that just 57,000 homes a year to be built in the next five years, 40% down on levels experienced in the late 2010s. So we've got more people coming in than ever. We've got no builders around because we've all gone broke. Um, interesting times ahead. And we've got hyperinflation on the 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 the, the the, uh, the the horizon and um, interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, here's an article which my team have put in, which is a bit old now, but just talking about the stock market collapsing off the back of everything. Um, a little comment that I should throw out for everybody. If you have a super fund, which is probably 100% of people watching this should have a super fund. Um, probably don't even know how much you've got in your super fund. If you don't know how much is in your super fund, you, that's a very worrying thing because you could have a quarter of a million bucks, a half a million bucks, 200 bucks, which is all your money, right? Like if you have a super fund and you don't know where it is, and you don't know what it's invested into, um, you should be taking very good care of that and working out how you can protect it and how you can maximize what you can do with it. And I can't give you guys super advice, but all I can say is, uh, just be very cautious of that. And uh, if you need help, I can put you in contact with the right people to discuss that. Um, okay, so 
These ones are going to be the fun articles because we're going into war. <laughs> war. Who would have thought? Um, so you remember that um, um, little Kim, um, you know, little Kim, Kim Jong Un with his rocket dick uh, in North Korea going back five years ago. Everyone was like, he's going to create nuclear war. He's going to, you know, be the um, you know, he's going to blow us all up and we should go and attack him and all that sort of stuff. And then suddenly we saw that um, Donald Trump came in and uh, rolled out Hollywood. You know, they took photos. Yeah, little Kim. Yeah, let's take photos with him. And, uh, you know, we never heard about that afterwards, right? He was a good guy. They paraded him around town and then he just left. Trump left, he left and it was all okay. Well, when you look at that from the surface, you can sit there and make any judgment. I always can tell the level of intellect with people when they start talking. They're like, oh, yeah, that guy is terrible. And it's like, I couldn't fucking tell you if Kim Jong-un and his little dick is a terrible guy or he's a good guy or whatever. All I can tell you is that I've been told to believe that from listening to things that have come from the media. And whenever you question that, it's like the fluoride stare kicks in and the people go, you're crazy, you're an idiot, this isn't this, blah, blah, right? But when you dig deeper, I did a webinar on this in 2018, and I think it was about the 23rd or the 20, I think it was the 28th actually of March 2018, um, that something very big happened, right? And that, um, that uh, China started trading oil in Yuan. Uh, China started trading oil in Yuan. And then everybody wanted to uh, be friends with little Kim Dick, right? And um, why, right? Why did that happen? So back in the Korean War, if you go back through history, there was a peace deal made uh, where North Korea became the military base for China, right? So if China went to war, then I, I'm butchering this as well, right? So, um, <laughs> um, you know, someone could be back at me. Um, so don't, don't hold me to this 100%, right? But North Korea was a military base for China. Uh, and they were trying to do deals with North Korea to stop that agreement from happening because they need to try and take the weapons off China. So nowadays we see that they say that there was a, an illness that started in China. Right? It's funny that this talk from China has become a big thing. Right? So China this, China that, China next thing. So there's the Silk Belt, there's the Belt Road that they're trying to do, um, which is establish a free trade agreement through the continent, from Russia, um, through China, India, all those places. Um, so there's the, the, the Belt Road that they're looking at doing. Um, and then um, we've got China trading oil in Yuan. Last time, um, someone tried to trade oil in their native country, um, Gaddafi, tried trading oil in gold. He was killed, right? Gaddafi was killed. And um, yeah, Belt and Road Initiative, thanks for that, mate. Um, so Gaddafi got killed, Saddam got killed, and they said it was ma weapons of mass destruction, right? Had occurred. But we've got China here. But if they went to war with China, China would gobble them up, right? There's too much human capital. The cost of life, uh, is is next to nothing, right? There's too much human capital and US would be destroyed. So they're gonna try and fight it out different ways. Why do you think we've seen trade deals? Why do you think we've seen all these uh, psychological warfare for everybody to hate China? Why do you start seeing that less production of goods is coming out of China? Do you not think and question, okay, maybe uh, China is going to produce all that goods and services, but potentially for another nation or continent that could be the same sort of size, and who could that be? Oh, maybe that could be Russia, right? And then maybe you see that they go, oh, well, Russia is a psychopath, right? And before I get any pink haired, um, gender fluid pronoun, I don't know, right? People going nuts at me, right? And there's no ill intent in that front, right? But it seems to be some groups of people that get very triggered very easily because they've been called the wrong name or something like that. I've been called lots of things in my life, so my skin's very tough. But um, I don't know Putin, right? And my video is probably gonna drop in views now because I said the word, right? But anyway, um, I can't make any comment on that, but it seems a bit odd that 
these guys are now starting to trade oil. They're trying to trade different sort of currencies um, rather than the US dollar, right? And what would happen? Who's the biggest holders of the US dollars, right? So what is the US dollar? It's just debt that's being created uh, by the form of a bond. And who's the biggest bond holders of that? We've well, got China, you've got Russia, you've got these guys. Literally, if they didn't, didn't renew the bonds, the US dollar would implode, right? Um, it'd be a lot worse than what it is and it, it would lose its currency. So we're now in a position where we're seeing a war starting to uh, get heated up just as much as the, you know, the day then get heated up. Uh, we're seeing this war that's being taken out in uh, Ukraine, which has got a lot of money being washed, um, uh, you know, over in Ukraine potentially, um, and NATO coming in, and all these armed US um, sort of institutions, which when you think about who owns US, it's not even the US, it's these other nations, right? There's a little nation somewhere on the 33rd parallel of the earth, um, which controls all these. And if you ask me my opinion, it would be that they've made a big switch. You could call it a reset, right? Um, I'm not going to call it Switzerland, right? Because it's not over near there either. It's a little place on the 33rd parallel, um, which controls most nations, right? There's always pilgrimage to this, uh, this nation. And, um, it appears that it could just be a switch from one, um, uh, you know, economy, right, uh, being the US, to China, right? And they've spent the last 20 years in R&D building up the infrastructure of this nation to be able to produce what the US used to be, right? But anyway, what's going to happen to our currency, right? I said... In 2018, I've said for many, many years that we would see the US dollar die. We would see our native currencies die. We would see the Aussie dollar die. We would see the British pound die. We would see the euro die. Right? What will come after that? Just remember this. Will it be China bucks? Will it be a CBDC? Or would it be a CBDC issued from the IMF, right? Every time we see a collapse, someone else comes to bail out the, the one that just collapsed, right? We've seen bad companies go bust, the banks buy them out. The banks go bust, the countries bail them out. See, the, the countries go bust, who's going to bail out the countries, right? Well, the central banks. You see, the central banks go bust, who's going to bail out the central banks? And my thoughts is, is that that will come down to a thing called the IMF, which is the International Monetary Fund, and the IMF will do a thing called a SDR, which is a special drawing right. And that special drawing right uh, will be what our new currency is um, uh, based on. So, um, uh, cool. Lots of questions coming through, guys. It's a bit difficult for me to read the questions because they're all on my phone as I'm recording this. But keep it coming through. I'll answer them if I can. But... I believe that as we start seeing the countries go bust, the central banks will bail them out, the central banks go bust because they're taking on all the risk. The risk just keeps going up the system and eventually it will be seeing as a, a special drawing rights come from the International Monetary Fund, in my opinion. And it's just a humble opinion from a crazy guy on the internet. Probably not as crazy as this dude here. Forgets where he is, but anyway. So, two last articles here. Super forecasters have made predictions about the likelihood of Australia-China's war, right? Why is Australia starting a war with China, right? Because they've done deals with the US to, you know... What I find funny is that we're watching all of these things, right? We're seeing China this or whatever. I have never seen an article ever, right? Ever. I've never seen one bit of news showing what happened in Russia today. Right? What's happened? Like they say, oh, these bombed someone, whatever, right? But I haven't seen, um, you know, news saying, oh, the weather over in Russia or whatever. You see in China these things, but why are we so disconnected? You see in the US, um, a kid killed a teacher, right? You've seen um, a green haired dude say that he's been called the wrong name, right? You're seeing all these things come out from the US trying to program us. 
but I haven't seen anything come from any of these other nations. Is it like they're gridlocked, like um, North Korea is from promoting propaganda through them? Anyway, it's just kind of weird. A team of global super forecasters have made a series of predictions about the future of Australia and China's relationship in uh, rising tensions. Just before we get into any of that as well, everyone goes cheap shit gets made in China and we get we just love eating using cheap shit, right? You go to Kmart, you get all the cheap shit that's been made from all around the country, all around the world, right? They're making these cheap products. But when you think about it, we're the ones that are providing the material for handing over to them, right? The first question I'd ask is, why don't we make all the cheap shit, right? We'll just get more people to be able to do so. We'll be able to produce and export and we'll be a very uh, wealthy nation, but that's just not how it works in the system of things, right? But secondly, um, we are China's, you know, plebs in the ground, pulling the stuff out of the ground to hand to them so then they can sell it to the rest of the world. So they can fight all they want, but where's it gonna end up? And how did it start? Uh, Australians have been warned to brace for tensions with China to reach new highs, with the war between the two countries likely to break in just over a decade. According to the team of predictors around the world, known as super forecasters, <laughs> I've seen all these things, uh, two weeks to flatten the curve, they're really good forecasting. Uh, 2036 is most likely date for an armed conflict between Australia and China to be declared. <laughs> they come up with this shit? Anyway, uh, super forecasting scientifically validated. Super forecasting is a scientifically validated. Well, I don't think anything finds scientifically validated after the last two years of what we've seen. Eh? Anyway, processes roots in the work of U.S. psychologist Philip Tetlock, who co-founded co -founded Good Judge. Anyway, the company won a geopolitical forecasting competition run. Sounds like a load of gibberish. Anyway, we asked when either Australia or China will both declare in a state of direct armed conflict with the other 30% of the forecasters said never. However, the median answers to the rest come to 2036, which is, I'm not even gonna read the rest of it, right? Will a war occur, in my view, between us? I believe instead of us being, you know, down on our knees doing deals, right? You've seen the John Howard era, you've seen the Keating era, you've seen uh, the Rudd sort of era, and all these guys, doing the deals with the US, um, I believe that Australia will be taken over from the US and it's like, no, no, China's, Australia's our bitch and we'll be under a Chinese sort of situation there, potentially, right? But where does it all come from, right? Why doesn't China just invade us and take all our shit, right? Because they need us, right? We play an important role in, uh, in having that. So, um, here we go. I'm going to read this one here. Chris said, it's about controlling the narrative. If people in Australia were to see what Putin was actually about and his perspective on the US, I truly believe that the population would change their uh, perspective on the thing. As Australian media is probably controlled by the US, we only see what they want us to see. Exactly my point. Exactly my point. And that's why I can't go on the TV anymore. That's why I can't go and participate in mainstream media because they only talk about the things that they want to have as an agenda. Uh, they only want to talk about whether it be political, whether it be these things. Do you know how many times I've been wrapped up in interviews and they try to make me look like some bad guy from the Labour Party, right? And they're like, oh, you're the cause of the housing crisis, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, you, you guys are the cause of your own crisis, but you know, we're, we're not going there. I've always been really respectful to these guys, right? But I just look at it and it's like, this is all bullshit, right? All bullshit. Um, this here is my last article, and this is the really exciting thing for us to talk about, right? Because we're realizing that if you go to the bank, you can't pull out more than $50 worth of coins, right? You can't go to the bank and pull out more than $2,000 worth of cash, right? Imagine being in 1990, right? I actually heard this, right? right? Was that, it was the ANZ, right? The ANZ bank, I went in. I went into all the banks, right? I went into all to see, will someone give me cash? It was just a test, right? It was just a test. And the lady was, she was very lovely. And it was like, just before anything, she goes, we don't hold cash anymore because it's because of the health crisis. Um, you know, the people aren't using the cash. And it's very important that we don't store too much here because we could create a health contagion inside of our branch. 
And I sat there and I was like, if someone's been brainwashed by words and vocabulary, how does you handing a bit of cash cause a fucking risk? They come in sealed plastic bags, right? It's not like you're sitting there counting five set pieces out there. They're coming from Armagard or Prostura or whatever the, however you pronounce the yellow trucks that rock up from these guys, right? But just the gibberish of agenda, right? And I overheard the guy beside me, right? Me just asking for these coins in the ANZ, there was me and some dude beside me. But within like three minutes, other people just started lining up. And I realized this feels like a traffic jam in here. I walked out like literally three, five minutes later, and there was a queue all the way out and around the place, right? What are these guys happening when they get to the bank? The bank teller with no screen on it says, hey, yeah, you want to get some money out? Here's the ATM. I'll show you how to use the ATM, right? They do not have money. You don't have access to it, right? So the banks don't have money. Uh, the companies don't have money. Everybody's going broke because the liquidity's dried up. Um, businesses are falling. Certain things are going on. Um, very, very strange world out there. We've got countries going broke. And now, well, we've heard that Putin's doing bad things, we've heard China's doing bad things, whatever. Right? Going back a week ago, this occurred. Right? What that says is Brazil and China ditched the US dollar for trade payments for favour of the yuan. Brazil and China have agreed to bypass the US dollar when paying for trade goods. Here's why it's a massive deal. I think this could have been one of the biggest news articles of this decade, right? I say this decade because the news articles of, you know, illness and stuff like that are very questionable, right? But when you start saying, I haven't seen enough news, we should be talking about how the currency that we trade in for the last 50 years, 100 years, have a wish, if I you want to wish back, you know, it used to be traded in the, the British pound and then it went to the US dollar and the dollar standard when it went from the Brenton Woods um, to the petrodollar. That has now crashed, right? There's cracks in it and China is hijacking that. And what happens when that, when that occurs is that the power goes to those who create the currency. So the more deals that are being done using the yuan, the reason why the US has got it is because people have to go and buy their money that they print from nothing and then use that to trade, which makes them wealthy. And that's why US used to be the industrial revolution. And it was an industrial country which used to make cars and produce things, right? It became a producer and it became successful. Then it became a consumer. And it's like, instead of you going to work every day to earn your money, it's that you became a consumer and you just printed all your money and you printed it on like a credit card and they basically put a credit card over the nation to crash their currency, their, 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 their country and their native currency. So if we look at China at the moment, what's going to happen to China over the next decade, right? The next two decades, three decades, as they start trading in their currency, China is going to become very wealthy and even a bigger superpower because they I, because every other nation is using their base currency and it gives them strength, it gives them power, it gives them control within this system. And that's why we're seeing such things as there's a war going to happen and China want to go kill everyone. China doesn't want to kill everyone, they want to remain control. I'm sure that the UK, uh, that Russia uh, and Putin is not trying to kill everybody, he's, trying, he's being attacked there. We don't know those stories because we're not being told the factual stories of what's really going on, right? Uh, he's not, he's being voted in and all those sorts of things. He ain't just some psychopath heading to a school and, and shooting everybody. There is a war going on and it's only a one-sided war of what we're being told. But anyway, we saw every time they tried to trade in a different currency, the um, prime minister, president, ruler, the ruler of that land uh, has wound up dead. But these two nations are too big for these guys to wound up dead. So they're fighting it in a different format. Uh, Brazil has just cut a deal with China to ditch the US dollar when paying uh, each other for trade goods. The very latest victory being Beijing's long-term drive to stop the greenback and establish yuan as a dominant international currency. The deal announced on Thursday has revived concerns about the US dollar's future. Uh, Brazil and China will directly exchange payments without first converting the currency to a trusted third-party economy. 
that's the traditional role of the Green Bay. Uh, it has became the backbone of the global economy after World War II. The enormous economy, robust democracy, and transparent regulatory systems in the US uh, quickly entrenched its reputation as a safe haven for international investors. But times have changed. The US is no longer looks as socially or economically stable as it did a decade ago. No shit. No shit. Right? When I think of the US, I think of a third world country uh, with weird people in it, right? With weird people, right? That's all I can say, right? Um, uh, the enormous economy, uh, where are we at? Um, increasing number of nations are eager to find an alternative financial systems to insulate themselves from Washington's willingness to use sanctions as political leverage. We would impose severe sanctions on anyone who would arm Russia, President Joe Biden pronounced, pronounced uh, when... Um, asked about the possibility of China rearming Russia after its disaster attempt to invade Ukraine, uh, we would respond. The message struck home. So what they're talking about here is when you're trading in the US, they have the power to turn it off, right? If you can't access your money, if you can't access your currency, if you don't have a currency to trade in, you are at the mercy of your ruler or controller to do what they tell you to do in order to get whatever you want to get out of them. And that is exactly the problem I see when we look at a digital world with no cash floating around. You can't trade outside of that system. If they want to turn you off, they want to flick you off, they want to say no food for you today, no going outside of your five kilometer radius that your car is programmed to do, they can control you with that just like they're doing now the country. If you don't think they're going to do that, think about all the things they've done for you for the last five years. And most people are still asleep and going, oh, they would never do that to me whilst they're locked in the house uh, with no rules, uh, with no rights over their own body or their own sovereignty or their own self or their own blood. Anyway, it's a different topic. World governments hold US dollar reserves to speed global transactions that enable reserve banks to intervene in foreign exchange markets to prop up their own currencies, business, tourists, and private investors. Also find the US dollar's availability, ease and reliability, blah, blah, blah. Um, sanctions following the, blah, blah, blah. Anyway. So countries are now trading against the US dollar. Uh, China is using its base currency, trying to take over from the US. Um, what would happen if the US dollar was dropped as a reserve currency? Uh, whoever picks it up, which it looks like it would be China, would become much more powerful. Um, and, uh, you know, as it is and as it so should be, because they've been the ones that have been working um, <laughs> and just called people NPCs. <laughs> um, so, the, um, what was I going to say? I got distracted there. Um, what would happen if we lost our currency? Where would, where would that lead us um, in Australia? Where would that lead us in the world? Uh, what would the risk be? Um, I just think it's a natural part of the collapse of the civilization that we had. Put in inverted commas. It's just not what we had. It's what we've been accustomed to. Um, so looking at um, the first thing, if US lost it, that would exacerbate the hyperinflation that we're about to see. Because our country is trading the Aussie dollar, unless we took our Aussie dollar and we pegged our Aussie dollar to Yuan, um, we would most likely get sucked out um, in that tsunami as the ocean goes out um, and we would... Um, um, Keep the questions coming, guys. Um, we we would still head through our hyperinflation. So my thoughts are is that we're well on track. The only way for them to get through this, and if the US wasn't selling their bonds to China, then the US would have to print their own bonds, which would just you'd have months, weeks, months before the whole thing caved in. But they you know they have a good way of being able to kick the can down the road, right? Like. They just saved these banks, right? So we had three banks die within a week. Um, then we had Credit Suisse. Like who, who cares about Credit Suisse? It's just a little bank out there, right? One of the largest banks in the world. That went and got bailed out for a billion dollars, right? I actually thought that was one of the cheapest investments of 2023 was Credit Suisse getting bailed out, right? The opportunity there, amazing. I wish I had a billion dollars so I could go and buy that 
um, clapped out bank because the infrastructure there is so amazing. Um, as we start seeing more of these things occur, we're going to see you know, more printing, more stimulus coming from the system, uh, more bailouts coming through. The tens of trillions of dollars are multiplying, right? They're just, they, they said that they've given a loan. They called it a loan for 12 months. What happens in 12 months time when that loan needs to be rolled over? They expand the balance sheet, right? And then suddenly the risk coming out of those banks and going back to the central banks. But what happens when the central bank blows up? That's when we end up in the final stages, probably in about five, six years, with the IMF taking over. It would be my view of what we're about to see. So um, am I concerned about what is happening out there? Um, in short, no, I think it's just a part of the system and it's a part of the opportunity of where you can um, you know, make your piece of your life for you to have control over what you do. You can either sit there um, and be brainwashed by watching TV, which I take as a privilege that you want to um, that you want to watch this instead of um, you know watching your TV or Netflix. So we're on the right track. You're educating yourself. Um, you know, control what's going in your mind. Control what you're consuming food-wise. Control um, what you're doing in order to be able to get through life, right? Most people are controlled from one stream of income, one job, um, and if, you know, they're at mercy, right? That's what 2021, 2022 specifically told us is that people are controlled by that job. And, um, you know, the more options you have, the more choices you have, uh, the more assets you have, the more that you're gonna benefit from these times. The worst thing that you could be invested into is cash, I have no cash, I have great cash flow. That cash flows through my accounts as soon as it hits my account to try and get it out as quick as I can. Um, cash flow is important. Uh, in a hyperinflation scenario, which we will see, we will see the currency fall. You don't wanna be invested in currencies. Um, the opposite to cash is debt. So the debt becomes worthless, so you can pay that debt off. Any asset that you have will get inflated away. The cash flow streams will be inflated away. And that is the world we're in. Um, we've just seen as of today, what is the date? The 4th of April, 2023. Uh, we've seen um, the bank has put a hold on rate rises. <laughs> surprise, surprise, right? What are they gonna do, raise them even further? Um, I believe it'll be another quarter before we start seeing uh, re reprieval from, you know, the rates starting to fall, depending on what um, what blows up um, uh, in the meanwhile, in the next three months, will it be another bank? Will it be a country? Will it be the uh, some segment of the, the bond market? Will it be the rolling over of the US debt? Will it be, what will it be that blows up next for them to have to print more? And each time they're printing, it's just adding to the inflation. They've literally said to us, that they can't control inflation now. They cannot control inflation. They cannot wind things back. They cannot even pause it. They're doing everything they can to stop it, but that's not even working, right? Um, so as that takes off, that is, I guess, where the greatest opportunity of our lives or our generation um, for us to be able to, 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 to take it in. So, yeah, I guess um, looking at that front, more taxes needed. We can't tax people because they've got no money as it is. They're already being taxed with inflation. So just add more people in the mix and we can play with this Ponzi scheme and it's been a little bit further. Um, uh, so lots of questions coming through. Keep the questions coming through now. I can't get through them all because my arm, I've got long arms, I'm massive, but my phone's a bit further away on the other side of the table. Um, Question here from Joel was, does our, exactly our previous question, Nathan, when does our assets change? Like, I can't see the previous question there. Um, I saw it a while back. Just give me two seconds. I'll try and, I'll actually go from the top, guys. I'll go from the top from what I can see here. Um, Uh, I can't see it there, sorry, Joel. But as for 
a currency? When will it swap? When will we go to China? I don't see that right at the moment. Um, the deals that have been done at the back end, you can see who's aligned, right? It's like when you pick up the news, you can see that when they talk about the world, the world exists of US, Canada, um, uh, New Zealand, Britain, Australia. It's like those countries are the world and the globe. Um, and, you know, Russia, they just sound like fairy tales, right? Because they don't exist out there in what we're being told. So you can sort of tell who we're aligned with, who our deals are being done with. It's a war. It's a war on that front, right? So, um, yeah, the currency comes in all different formats. Um, what should we be doing with our super? I have been told a few times it's going to get messy with the big super funds going bankrupt next. Exactly. So if we sit there and think about it, I can't give you advice on super. However, uh, I have a self-managed super fund. Um, I think about if you've got a quarter of a million bucks, 100 grand, 200 grand, 150K, who is managing that? What is it invested into? It's your money, right? The, the money in the super is bought up of bonds. They're bailing out these things. So it's the biggest Ponzi scheme, right? Take control of your money in your super. Get I can't say to get a self-managed super fund, but I have a self-managed super fund and I've had it for over 15 years. Um, if you need help on that front, reach out to my team. They can put you in contact with someone that can give you the advice on that. Uh, Tommy said the wages don't grow, grow, but with the dying currency, it will enable people to pay off their debts faster. Correct, it would be a bit like a debt jubilee. Um, the one thing that doesn't grow, so your wages aren't growing to keep up with inflation, but the amount of products and Ponzi schemes that they've stuck on, after pay. Like I saw somewhere, I don't know where it was, it's like Domino's or something like that, where you can get after pay to pay for your food or make believe food, right? Imagine buying a pizza and saying, I'll pay for it in two weeks and getting a loan for it. Like, fuck me, dead. Crazy world we live in. Um, Sam says, do you think the cash rate will go below 1.5 again by 2024 sometime? I believe without seeing, and these are unforeseen things, without seeing the US fly off a cliff into hyperinflation tomorrow and everybody change the currency to use the yuan, um, I see things reversing to go lower than where they were. If you go, and this is based on where I'm, getting it from. If you go and look throughout history, there's a new lower low each time the cycle goes through. So when they try to fix up the last problem, the interest rates always come lower and lower and lower because interest rates can't go back up due to the fact of all the new debt that piles in once they are down at the lowest point. So if you look every time, yes, it goes up, it goes down, up and down, up and down, but it's in a line that's coming straight down. I do believe that we'll see a negative interest rate is my personal view. When that occurs, don't know. When do I think we'll start seeing a change in rates? I believe in the financial year, around July, could be August, could be June, could be May. I don't think it's gonna be May, don't think it's gonna be June, but I do believe around July. Don't make bets on it, because it's just my view. Um, how quickly will depend on how quickly they blow things up, right? And the more things that blow up, the better it's going to be for those of you that hold debt. Um, Nate says, hopefully they reduce rates or I force up rents because the 10K in property cost out of my pocket year per year is not that enjoyable. I hear you on that front. Um, the opportunity that is here at the moment, um, yes, it's not enjoyable for all investors out there. Um, a lot of investors are actually better off because they're buying stuff at 200 grand, so the interest rate hasn't affected that much, but they're gaining for the benefits of the rents going up. Um, but you yeah, just push those rents up. When the rates come down, we don't see rents coming down. So that's the, uh, the cool thing. Um, Tommy said, uh, hey Nathan, this is Joel's original question. Thanks mate for resharing that. Hey mate, love your work. When will be the time to pay off your debt or pay down your debt? If they reset into the new CBDC, will they debase the AUD uh, but keep the debt at the current value? Yeah, so there would be, in my view, there would be a conversion period of time where they'll say, as of this date, the debt will be $1 for one China buck, right? Whatever, digital buck, CBDC buck, whatever they call it, right? There'll be a point 
where they do that. But up until that point, I think we've got a lot more to go to. Um, I make jokes about um, paying off your house with a Big Mac, but if you go to a third world country, you can find in different currencies that it would cost you two hundred thousand dollars for a or two two hundred thousand of their native currency for a burger. Um, I believe that there could be a point where an average wage could be a million bucks. Uh, I believe that you know it could be two million dollars. You will see signs. I will be so bloody loud when it gets to that point, and I'll tell you, like, hey, I'm going to pay off my debt today. So I will give everyone that um, love and um, yeah feedback and, and you know share with everybody when I go to do that. Um, but I, I don't see it happening right at the moment. I believe it will be this decade. I believe it will be maybe five years time or four years time or six years time. But I don't think it's gonna happen in 2023 or 2024. Like we have not seen this. Um, something really cool actually, um, and I, I don't have anything here about it right at the moment. Um, I did post this in the Birch feed. Um, I've made jokes about Lebanon recently, right? Uh, the jokes weren't about Lebanon, uh, just so none of my Lebo friends come and you know, have words with me. <laughs> no, um, the, in Lebanon, they have the jokes that I made was that they're going to the bank, people are going to the bank, taking a gun and robbing the bank and saying, give me my, give me my fucking money. Right? <laughs> they're robbing the bank for their own money, right? Because there's uh, things that are, um, the things that are in place, right? The things that are in place, um, sorry, someone just messaged me on the screen here. Um, just as much as in Australia, there was a, an article that came out the other day about, it was a, a 2GB or 3AW or something, artic, uh, radio call about ANZ in Melbourne. There's a few ANZs which have gone completely cashless. Right? So if you go to the bank and say, I want 500 bucks or 5,000 bucks, they say, piss off, we can't give it to you. Go to an ATM, but there's a cap at like 300 bucks. So that's why in Lebanon, they're going in and shooting up the bank and saying, fucking give me the money or I'm gonna blow your head off, right? And they're not robbing the bank. It's, it's humorous, right? That you can't even get your money, right? That's how big of a scam it is. People feel like, oh, I better stick to cash. It's the safest thing. Well, there ain't no thing, such thing as cash, right? But the biggest robbery will be when people go to get their cash and their $100 that used to buy them a whole pile of stuff doesn't even buy them a Big Mac, right? And that's the, the loss of the confidence in the dollar, um, the devaluation of the currency, and that is when things collapse. So in Lebanon, um, I'd have to get these specific exact numbers, right? If we go back five years ago in Lebanon, I was looking at the charts, I posted them in Birchfeed, go to birchfeed.com, um, you can look at it. Someone's putting um, numbers here. Uh, in the comment section, but basically in Lebanon, I think in five years ago, it was like a million Lebanese pound would buy one gram of gold, right? It, to put in perspective, a gram of gold in Australia at the moment would be about a hundred bucks, right? So one gram of gold would probably be about that size, right? Um, would be a hundred bucks. Very thin, like a credit card size, but the size of uh, M&M, right? So, in Lebanon, it would cost one million pound five years ago. And then over the last five years, um, up until maybe a year ago, that went up to about two and a half million pound. Right? But as of the last three months or six months, that one gram of gold is now worth 30 million pound. Right? It literally, so imagine if everything went up tomorrow by if everything doubled in the next two years or the next four years, and then at the end of four years, everything that had doubled had gone up 10 times higher or 15 times higher in a period of six months, right? And what has happened is that that is a hyperinflation. It's very early stages, but it happens, the same thing happens every single time in every single currency. Um, and you need to go to those currencies, not like physically go to Lebanon or physically go to Venezuela, but go and research who made the money, who was the beneficiary out of it, how did it affect the people there? And people can't afford food, right? It's really sad, um, but prepare yourself for that. Make sure you have food so you don't have to pay anything that, as a dollar that crashes very harshly, 
make sure you have access to all of those things that you're going to need to survive through that period of time. Make sure you have cash flow streams coming through. Make sure that you've got assets. Make sure you've got access to things that you can trade. Make sure you have access to food. Make sure you have access to a network of people that could trade for their time, energy, trades, and services uh, to get you through that period. So, um, yeah, that's my view on that. Um, uh, Michael said, hi, Nathan, what is the cause of all this? Um, I probably need another 40 hours of this Facebook Live to um, to explain and go through all that. Um, but the basic cause is, um, I'd say fraud. If you or I were to do what caused this, it'd be caused fraud, called fraud. Um, but the central banks, it'd be a mis misuse of power um, of robbing our currency. They've just printed too much currency being money, the dollars, they just keep printing, keep printing. Imagine you had your own printing press, we'd all end up in jail, uh, but the central banks have the ability to keep printing and um, some very special people that are very close to the central bank have the ability to benefit because they get access to this cash that they're printing at a very cheap rate and then they can sell it out and make their businesses on top, they're called the banks. And you know, this system, it's like going out and getting drunk every day, right? Just drunk, 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 drunk. And you're like, I'm fine, I'm fine. Eventually, something's gonna give in, your liver blows up, whatever, and it's not gonna be you know, good. Um, we're at that point now where it has been abused, basically, the, uh, the currency, and it's losing its value. People are like, I don't, I don't take it serious anymore, and that's where we're at. Um, Matt says here, the largest servos in uh, South Australia now accept Bitcoin and Ethereum as payment. Interesting, interesting. Um, when they use that, it might be something like BitPay, so there'd be a service provider that would change it, and it'd be like an exchange, so it's an on-ramp to convert cash to that. Um, where I'm really interested, though, is uh, businesses which do not um, accept cash at all. It's like, I want to give you cash. I want to give you money. Will you not take my money? It's crazy. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, Joel says, awesome, we'll catch up tomorrow. I'll speak to you tomorrow, mate. Uh, George, he said, um, uh, 2.6 million Lebanese pound equals $20. Uh, it's enough for a taxi trip. So yeah, if you do the numbers on that, um, $26 million would be like $200 USD. So it's just, yeah. Um, um, I've got Brendan here that writes lots of funny things. I, I appreciate your comments, mate. They, uh, they always get me laughing. Um, I feel for people over there. Exactly, right? It is not good. In a hyperinflation situation, like 98% of people are screwed, right? It's not good, right, for lots of people, but you can make it good for you. So if you can study hyperinflation, you can study what happens to a currency when it dies, if you can study you know, ways to protect yourself and look at all the, the moving parts, that's where the opportunity is. Um, um, what have we got here? Vanessa, uh, racism and jealousy leading to a war mongering US are basically the, those things. Uh, spreading hate, the US wants a war so they profit and keep the elite control of the common plebs and to keep selling the US thingy bobbies. Um, look, it's, uh, I couldn't say uh, much different, but the only thing I would say different is that I don't actually think US control anything. I think that there's a puppet, a hand, a master inside of that. Someone asked me beforehand on the comments up the top, I, I forgot about it. I remember seeing it scroll through faster before. Um, do I think the Matrix is a documentary, right? And I think that, you know, a lot of this stuff that they put out there in the media is subliminal messaging, not telling you, oh, look at that coincidence. It's like getting us used to the fact that these things occur, right? You look at all these models and the, the you know, the they, them things that are going out there. A lot of it's to program us to get us to want to, you know, or to accept it or to understand it and all those sorts of things we're putting in our face. And I think that when we look at, um, 
you know, the matrix, I think that there's a lot of subliminal messaging, which is predictive programming for the world that we really live in. And um, I think it's a fantastic movie. Um, I think there's a lot of truth to it. And I think that we do live in a simulation. Do I think that we're plugged in by a battery cell? No, but I think that if we were to go dig deeper, and it's a totally other subject that I don't know too much about, but like our spirit, our energy, our vibrations, and what the controllers get from us, from being on a negative energy and feeding us fear, um, we are like a battery to serve you know, the ruling power. So uh, I believe there is a much higher power, which is bad, uh, which is out there to control us. And I think that most of us are being controlled by evil and bad sources. And I don't mean that to be all too deep or off topic, but you asked the question, I gave you my thoughts. Um, and Nathan, what will happen to our personal debt home loans if the banks crash? Uh, the loans, I said it before, the loans will still survive. Someone will buy that because your loan is the asset to the bank. Um, you'll just be paying it off with devalued currency. If we see a currency crash, it's really the currency crash that you want to see, um, which will help your debt situation out. Um, uh, we've got here, get debt, yes, uh, debt's great. Uh, Stephen said the new branding looks good. I saw someone before him say something about uh, that. Uh, as we pop up into your news feed, uh, we have, I've spent a lot of, um, I've got a fantastic communications team. I've got um, great people that we've got working inside the business. And I realized that we needed to freshen things up, right? And I'll give a couple of minutes on that actually today uh, to talk about a new branding. Um, recently, as of yesterday. Um, it's been in the works for like six months. Uh, our, uh, our investors saw, <laughs> I, I did see that, yes, I did see the rainbow thing. That's not why it is. Uh, we have, um, we have um, uh, bright colors. My favorite colors are fluoro pink, fluoro blue. And uh, I feel like when we started the business years ago, like I had some of my brands that were fluoro pink and fluoro green and B Investor was a fluoro blue color. It was very cool and funky at the time for a 25 year old version of me. Um, and as we've grown and evolved, we need to make sure that we're in line with our community and where we're going. And um, you know, 10 years, uh, 14 years ago in March, uh, Be Invested started. Uh, I started and founded the business. Um, it was a very different time, but it wasn't too much different, right? It was a GFC. I quit my job in the middle of a challenging time. Most people were losing their jobs. Most people were very scared. Most people thought that I was a dickhead, um, and they said that I was going to lose out and I couldn't make money by buying properties for 100000 a piece and are now worth like a million bucks. Um, there was no such thing as a buyer's agent out there. There was probably only, I could count on one or two hands the amount of buyer's agents in 2008, 2009. Um, you tell someone you're a buyer's agent, they go, what, what is that? What are you doing, right? Now there's courses on how to be a buyer's agent. There's, you know, there's everybody's a property expert out there, right? But no one, uh, you know, I don't see that there's property experts with the knowledge or understanding of what happens out there. Um, some of the things I can say can be a bit controversial and way off, um, which is cool. And that's what we're all about is being bold. And um, I realize that we need to grow. My goal is to make uh, a million millionaires throughout the hyperinflation. That's one million millionaires. We've got 25,000 people, uh, 25 million people, 26 million people, maybe 27 million people in the country at the moment and more to come. And um, people think that the elite is like a very you know, small club, and I guess it is. Um, but why can't everybody be a part of you know, that elite? Why can't everybody participate? And um, yeah, my, my goal is to make a million millionaires throughout the hyperinflation, just everyday uh, people. So um, we changed the branding as we grow. We're going to you know, continuously change and evolve and adapt to where we're heading and, and who we want to become. And um, that's why we went through the new rebranding. I The old logo, I actually hated it. I don't even know why we had it uh, in a different time, maybe about six, seven years ago. Uh, management in my business uh, decided to do that. And I was like, okay, cool, let's, let's be done by that. Um, but I was not happy with that at the time. And I still wasn't until I'm happy now that it's been taken down. Uh, the minute I saw our branding and what we stand for and 
how how it was presented to me. I was like, that explains who we are and what we do. And um, it's just cool, right? Like I like colors, so it's, I don't have little flags up and all that sort of stuff. Don't have to worry about that, guys. But um, I like, um, I, I, I want us to grow to the next level. Um, a million millionaires is what we're here to do. And, um, and uh, uh, what are the bees if we can that style? Exactly, so the bee, we've got the little bee that's moving forward. Um, I do want to take over the banking industry one day. And it's quite funny, you know, we're now at a point where I've got, um, so cleaners are just coming to the office. Um, we're now at a point, 14 years later, we've been a part, I've made more millionaires than Lotto in the last decade. Uh, 14 years, uh, done over 15,000 real estate transactions for our investors, got a community that's awesome and not like anything else that's out there. Um, and yeah, we, we've now gone on to our second generation. I've got some of my investors from 15, 14 years ago, uh, you know, retired. Some of them are, um, you know, now bringing their children in. Uh, the children that were like, you know, bloody little ankle biters at the time, they're buying properties now with us, uh, which is really, really cool. Um, so yeah, we, we've grown and evolved. We've got it, the next 10 years is gonna be so exciting. We're now at a point when I had a goal of becoming a bank uh, going back 10 years ago. Right? I started Zinger Finance actually 10 years ago. And Zinger Finance will be getting a rebrand, the Blink property will be getting a rebrand, and it'll be, you know, be really, really cool when we do that. However, um, I had a goal of becoming a bank, but it's funny now, we're looking at the banks and the banks can't even survive. The bank doesn't have money. The bank just has debt contracts, right? So where will we be at 10 years time? It will be a whole different place we're gonna be at where something that's very different and fresh. I always like to be different, right? And uh, I think our new logo, our new um, website, our new look and feel is more up to where we're growing into. Um, into that space. And um, as I said, I wanted to take on the banks, but I see there's something very, very um, different moving forward. So I'm excited by that. It'll be funny to see a lot of people try and copy what we do and try and copy. You know, I remember people going on the news and like, I'm a poor kid from Western Sydney and you know, got lots of copycats out there, which is humbling, uh, bless them. But um, it'll be funny to see how many people try and copy our branding now with their new um, and you look and feel and, and whatnot. So yeah, very exciting. Um, there's some big changes coming to the group of companies um, over the next 12 months. Uh, I, I, as I said at the start of this, um, you know, Woolworths is renting out floor space in their building, right? I've never seen that beforehand. So Woolworths, they actually call the street Woolworths Way, number one Woolworths Way, there's a big building. They have a bus, their own Woolworths inside the Woolworths building for everybody. And they're renting out space in there. I just don't get it. Like, why are they cutting space, cutting staff? Um, Mac is cutting staff and articles that I shared in Birchfeed. Um, people are cutting, right? We're growing, we're expanding. And I look at the opportunity with, you know, just human capital, right? If we can grow as a community and reach our goals as a community and help people do cool things, um, you know, taking care of their own personal liberty and freedom, um, one step at a time, um, which would be really, really cool. Um, yeah, we're, we're growing and others are not. So um, yeah, that's what I'm excited by and that's why I changed it. Uh, as someone said beforehand, yes, I still got the rat fell, um, but someone said I should put the logo behind the wall. I'm actually just sitting in one of my meeting rooms in my office. I just felt it was cool to sit in here. Um, but the podcast studio, I need to get some really good soundproofing uh, stuff finalized with that i just want it to be like super airtight and like fucking high spec but i've literally got walls of tvs so it can be interactive i've got whiteboards which are like tv screens so i can throw the screen and you know move around it'd be really really cool so it's going to be a full-on tv studio that i've got that i'm building um but there will be lots of cool stuff in the background of that neon signs and all that sort of stuff so it's a proper recording studio if anyone wants to make some rap songs like the intro to the podcast, uh, yeah, maybe it'll be good for that as well. So, um, cool guys. Well, on that note, um, actually, well, we've got a couple more questions. Lecky, that's right, Nathan. Uh, love your mindset. Why can't everyone be in the elite club? 
Uh, is it saying that more crowded on the bottom than there is at the top? Exactly, right? But I think a lot of people uh, you know, are lied to in the world. Um, that I think there's a lot of people that have been sold, like go and look at anyone else. Like 10 years ago, 14 years ago, I keep saying 10 years ago, because it's just like yesterday, right? But 14 years ago, there was no way of getting this communication out like this, right? There wasn't everyone's trying to be a hero and you know, do things out there in the marketplace. And um, you know, there's all these people that are trying to, there's a dude in the soup saying, you should do this, you should do that. And they're selling you some you know, um, crap like this sort of guy. That looks like the sort of guy that would talk about finance to you and you'd sit there and go, I'm so dumb, I'll do whatever you tell me to do, right? That's the face of the finance industry. And that's why people don't break through. But I think, us being able to break it down, us being able to get our community involved, right? Success breeds success as well. And as a business, like there's only so many things that I can do. And I, I, I'd love to, for my ego, tell myself that I'm so great and I can do everything, but I, I just have a mind, right? If you took my mind away, I'm pretty boring, right? But I've got a fantastic team that help bring all those things. If we can keep growing the team and we can keep growing the community, we can keep, you know, sharing that as we go through this next phase. And I think the greatest level of wealth, and there's no one out there talking about it to the level of what we talk about here. Um, the greatest level of wealth is to be created in the next decade. There'll be great famine, but there'll also be a great feast. And the more people we can take with us on this journey, the more fun it's gonna be. And uh, it's been a great journey for the last 14 years, and I'm excited to see, yeah. You know. Lisa said, yes, bring back the whiteboards. They were great, cool. Actually, that's a good comment there, Lise. Uh, if you guys have a thought or an idea or a question that I could do on a whiteboard, give me, say, five video ideas. Uh, my team um, watch the comments on these things, so just leave some ideas of what you'd like me to do on a whiteboard session, um, and I'll go and film a half dozen whiteboard videos for you guys in the community. So I'm guided by what you guys want. Sometimes I go on to weird tangents, which is important, I believe, otherwise I wouldn't go on them, uh, to share with you guys what's happening in a different perspective and a different viewpoint. So uh, on that note, everyone, if you need help uh, with anything, reach out to my team, send us a, send us a message, a DM, um, email us at beinvested.com.au. Uh, do go and check out our new website, beinvested.com.au. Um, check out our social media channels. Let us know what you think of it, good, bad, or indifferent. I really liked it, and that's why we've gone with it. And uh, as did all the people in my team, as soon as I saw it, I was like, that is our branding moving forward. Yes, there's lots of colors, but yes, there's lots of black and white as well. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. Uh, be excited of the opportunities that are here. If you are scared, if you are unsure of where to turn to or what your next um, uh, move should be or what, um, you know, uh, what what something means, reach out to my team. Everybody is, uh, you know, doing the same sort of things, right? We're all on the same sort of journey. So we're all at different stages. My team are on the same stages, buying their properties. We've got 18 year olds in my office that are buying their first, second and third properties at the moment that work inside the business. Um, so rest assured, you won't call any other business that'll be like, oh yeah, I'm writing a mortgage for you and I've bought my first property and I'm 18 or, or you know, whatever the case may be, right? So um, yeah, on that note, guys, keep being awesome. We will catch up soon. Have a great week. Bye for now.